till death do us part. Nowadays, approximately 50% of weddings end in divorce. Someone might ask, why bother get married in the first place? In my 20 years of experience, I have helped over 1,000 couples tie the knot on the best day of their lives, and some even multiple times. Let's take a quick glimpse at the concept of marriage throughout history. For many years, and across various cultures, marriage was synonymous with a financial transaction class or society preservation, pre-arranged marriages for status, or even a display of power between families. Back in the day, women didn't have access to the workplace, so they needed financial security. On the other hand, men had the income, but they needed the heirs. The exchange was simple and pragmatic. Marriage was considered too serious a matter to be based on a fragile emotion such as love. Love and marriage were once widely considered to be entirely incompatible with one another. Marriage wasn't much more than a business transaction, most of the time linking two families. And thank heavens, we've come a long way. Marriage in the 21st century is not what it used to be. What may seem surprising is that the role of love in marriage is a relatively new concept. Yes, there are still many practical reasons and benefits to getting married. In fact, statistics dictate that a happy marriage brings with it better sleep, less risk of depression, longer life, better tax incentives, and they say that happy married couples are less stressed. I'm not so sure about the latter myself, being married with two children and the dog, because the less stress does not exist. So, what has marriage become in this day and age? Marriage today is a journey to try and get and find true happiness, share goals and a vision for the future as a twosome, and for love. Marriage, a journey through which we grow, we live, we develop. So things have changed. And one might ask, but what brought about these changes? First off, let's take into consideration the role of women in society. Women play a very important part in this change. They now have equal rights and roles in society, or are supposed to be on equal footing with their male counterparts. So they don't need financial security through marriage anymore. And they are now exposed to the world and have the same choices as men. Before, women were considered more to be a sex subject, so the core at the workplace, and they were not being taken seriously professionally. But now, oftentimes, they hold top executive posts, and in my opinion, not nearly enough. They have become more equal in society. And as a result, it has given women independence. Let's not forget the part that sex had in this change. Couples used to get married and start having sex. Now, couples get married and stop having sex <laughs> with other people. A few months ago, I was sitting uh, for a lunch with a huge gathering with my mother's family. There are a lot of people, because my mother's one out of 10 siblings. And my aunt was boasting that she happily survived 45 years of marriage. And she was telling us how my uncle on the day was very sick on the day of their wedding. He had the flu and it was terrible. 
And my husband who was sitting near me told her, oh, so no hanky-panky on your honeymoon night. And she had a very strong reaction and she said, she was explaining to us how in those days after the reception they go straight to the honeymoon and they went to Rome and she said, I had been waiting years to consummate this marriage. Flu or no flu, that was the night. <laughs> and we sat there like laughing, but two, three, four decades. Look at, a cha at the change of how sex and marriage go together. Monogamy used to be finding one partner for life. Monogamy now can be redefined as having one partner at a time or at least appearing to. Another major change was brought about by da -da -da -da, social media. It has had a huge impact on the way couples meet and court each other. We've gone from marriage before sight to love at first swipe. Hashtag Tinder Weddings is a thing now with thousands of images on Instagram. Not only has social media changed the way couples meet, but it has changed the way they think, they react, the way they are influenced, how they follow, who they don't follow, and the list goes on. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Clubhouse, there are so many, I haven't even got my head around all of them. But the bottom line remains that social media has changed the way all of us think, trust, and react. Of course, this is both good and bad in many ways, but the change remains, and it is a massive change. And finally, we lead to the change brought about by divorce and remarriage. Divorce was, became legal in Malta in 2011. Couples used to divorce because they were not happy. Nowadays, cu couples divorce because they feel they could be happier. Working on a daily basis with couples of all ages, I believe that the new wave of thinking is fight for your marriage and your love, but if it isn't right, it's not the end of the world. The end of a marriage is not a failure. So, do we look back at the first marriage and say, that was a big mistake, I should never have done it, or do we grab the good from it and move on? If you don't get it right the first time, life gives you the opportunity to try again and take your learnings with you. I believe society is leaning towards the latter. They say the grass is always greener on the other side. Is that why couples are divorcing? Am I advocating for divorce, you might ask? No, not at all. I'm still married to my first husband. We've been together 20 years, married for 13, and have two wonderful children and a dog. But what I'm trying to get to is that with so much change, we must first adapt our way of thinking, and then the way that society thinks will inevitably follow. All of these changes have led to a completely different pool of demographics of who is actually getting married in this day and age. So I have a lovely job, as most people would say. So when they ask me, what do you do? And I say, I'm a wedding and event planner. Wow, how lovely. And this is 99.9% .9 of the time. And believe me, it's not always the case. But I do help couples celebrate the best day of their lives, making it as beautiful, as flawless, and as magical as possible. But over two decades in the industry, and now my clients who go for the act of marriage are not the fresh 20-year-olds coming out of childhood. They come from three different demographics. Baby boomers born in 1946 
1964, possibly on their third marriage, or in their old age, found the love of their life 30 or 40 years their junior. Generation X, born in the mid-60s to the early 80s, tend to be on their second marriage. These are reaching peak earnings, so they have the spending power, but they are very loyal to brands. And our crazy millennials, born in the early 80s to the mid-90s, think Instagram and selfies, and you have them all wrapped up because they're all tech-savvy. They still want a good wedding, but it has to be Instagram perfect. Why do I mention these demographics? Well, marriage and the wedding day, which is when it all begins, has changed drastically, not only through my, the span of my career, but through the entirety of history. Let me give you some examples. So in the past, and this is through various cultures, the parents of the bride used to pay for the wedding. As a result, on the wedding day, the couple did not know half the guests. Now, millennials are starting to pay for their own wedding. So they choose their guests very carefully and, in fact, are having more intimate weddings. Also, because they're paying for it and it's hurting their pockets, they tend to have a bit of a bigger commitment to going for such a union and before saying the I do. Take Generation X. So, these have moved from the very bride-centric planning, which was very common, to the groom being involved. Why? Most, most of the time it's because it's his second time, and because he's gone through the process, he seems to think he knows it all. So they are getting very involved. Another example is the LGBTIQ plus weddings. This is stronger with the baby boomers and the Generation X, as most of the time they feel that they can finally be themselves and celebrate it. But, and yes, there is always a but, what do all these diverse demographics and couples have in common? on their wedding day. The vows. I take you to be my wife, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good and bad times, in sickness and in health. I will love and honor you all the days of my life till death do us part. These wedding vows remain largely unchanged since 1549. Yes, 1549. But so much has changed since then. People are now living longer. So, till death do us part clearly means a longer time and clearly more difficult. Of course, Till death do us part still works for some. If you can no longer stand each other, this still applies for some too. I believe that even if it doesn't last forever, marriage is a journey most certainly worth pursuing and protecting, whether it is once, twice, or three times.